Hey, pass me a beer. This episode, Chad loses his shit. I told you! And has struggles to regain it. Look, at least promise me you won't drink. Alcohol always leads to trouble. Big man. Hey, who wants to play drink the beer? Right here. <laughs> you win. All right, what do I win? Another beer. How come none of these brewery websites have their 2018 schedules out yet? Just have a cup of coffee. Bear it is. Because it's only February. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Cough E. B. Ear. I kill for a beer. <gasps> Cheap beer and a sympathetic ear. Step right up. I'm... Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining and listening to the Bearded Hops podcast. This is a super special episode tonight. I am your host, Adam. And over there is my really good friend. That's Chad. We call him Chad Alack. Hello, Adam. Hey, just do buddy. shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but why man. not? I can't <laughs> talk about beer like that. Okay. Oh, hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us, Adam. And <laughs> welcome to the Beer Hops Podcast. And right over there, as you see right to next to me in one of those directions on the screen, that's Chad. Hi, Chad. Hello, Adam. How's everybody doing tonight? Oh, it's going to be a good one, I think. Now, I didn't know a whole lot about this beer until we started kind of researching it and texting YouTube videos back and forth to each other about it. Yes. Uh, I actually, I'd heard of this beer a few years ago, but have basically completely forgotten about it until, uh, again, this is another one that came to me uh, by my friend Mike Bullock on Baltimore, Maryland, the same guy that brought us the Pliny the Elder. He also Dogs. gave <laughs> he also uh, brought along a dogfish head 120 IPA. Yes, I have uh, I've known of the dogfish head and uh, I've never partaken of the 120. Have you ever had have you had any of them? Do they have a they have a 60, 90 and a 120, right? Yeah, uh, and the, and the 75 that we just learned about. But and I have I was about, yes. Yes, I have had the 60 and I have had the 90. I've not had the 75, and I've not had the 120. I'll have to go to my untapped here for uh, an official ruling, but I don't think that I've had any of them at all. I actually, I've got a one uh, untapped window open, but I'm going to go to another one so that I can check my mine as well. I know I've had them. Um, I just don't know if I've actually checked them. Right, well, apparently, apparently I've had a 90-minute. And I liked it, so I don't, I don't know. I don't remember it. That's why we have untapped, because when I drink, I forget things, apparently. Um, well, cool. Yeah, so so. I, have, I have not checked in the 90. I have checked in the 60. I, but I know I've had the 90-minute down in Florida uh, probably a year or two ago. I just yeah. didn't check it in. But, yeah, I had the 60-minute and liked it. Gave it a four. So the uh, Dr. Shed 120-minute IPA... Uh, it is an Imperial India Pale Ale. This is 12 ounces. Um, and the ABV on this biznatch uh, lands between 15 and 20. They usually land around 18, they said. Yeah, we've, I, I did a little reading earlier today. Uh, both of us have bottles that were produced in 2017. So this will be an 18% ABV. Dang! So, 120 um, IBUs as well. So by the end of this, kids, this could be an interesting show. 100, um, 120 IP, IBUs. This yes, but, but as we know. I know. It doesn't mean anything. I'm just saying it's Jake, the highest. highest Jake, IBUs mean nothing, right, Jake? There we go. Yes. I just, this will be the highest IBU rated beer. Right? That's all I was saying. I, That's this is the highest IBU rated. Potential. potential. Remember? It's potential. It's, not, it's 120 IBUs regardless of. Potential 120. That's, Whatever. Anyway, um, so, um, so on the side of the bottle, right, focus, Jer, um, it does says, what do you have here is the holy grail for hop heads. This beer is continually hopped for 120 minutes, uh, for 120 minute boil, and then dry hopped for over a month. Enjoy now or age for a decade or so. So that's one thing that's a bit different about this guy. Uh, because it does have the higher ABV count, you can age this. Normally, we would say, don't you dare age an IPA because it will not be good. Yeah, and we've had these discussions before about uh, about the aging of, of an IPA and, and 
whether or not to do it. And we've had different numbers given to us. Uh, I know um, Greg from Stone says 37 days. Uh, we've heard two to three months at the most. Uh, we were at a brewery this past weekend. The guy said 120 days yeah. on their IPAs. Uh, and now we've got one that literally can be aged for 10 years. So what he said. I mean, it all depends. I think I would just ask the, ask the brewery. I mean, they're going to be the experts on it. So, and then I'm planning the elder. I mean, they were pretty descript about don't age it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I said it all over the bottle. Do not age, never age it. Yeah. So, so this, what's interesting about this one is that they came up with this brewing process that continually, <clears throat> excuse me, continually puts hops into the boil um, for 120 minutes. So they have a machine basically that continues to drop hops continually, nonstop for 120 minutes. That's, that's crazy. Usually, usually when you're doing a boil, you'll have certain time allotments. So if you're doing 60 minute boil at, at the 60 minute mark, you put some hops in at the 40 minute mark, you put some hops in, but nope, not here. They keep going. Yeah. And it, uh, they use uh, high alpha American hops, um, copious amounts, they say, throughout the boil and whirlpool. Yeah, and then it's dry hopped with another pallet of hops. For a month. Yes. Um, they call this the holy grail for hop heads. I'm not a hop head. Nor am I. But I am looking forward to trying this um, on, the, on the top there they have their... Is that the dogfish head? Yeah, and I actually kind of got really excited about this. A little, well, I was excited to try this beer when we first, when I got it, but we did a little bit of reading and research today yeah. about it, and it's actually been described not so much as an IPA, even though it's labeled an IPA. It's been described as a barley wine. Yep. And for anybody that's listened to any of our show, not any of them, but a few of our shows, we've talked about barley wines and how they've quickly become one of my favorite styles. So now I'm like super excited to try this beer. So is there anything else we need to say about it? It's, yes, thank you. There you go. That's <laughs> what I like to say. Let's get this puppy cracked open. Let's take a look at this beer. I can, I can smell it from here. I mean, yeah, there's hops, obviously. But there's also like a boozy yeah, very, yeah. under undertone. All right. Let's get the well, pour on. As a, as neither of us are going anywhere tonight. Yeah, we're we're gonna drink this. I'm one. just gonna drink this because Sam, even though Sam's yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, how do you pronounce his last name? Uh Colt. Uh sure. Okay. So Sam, the uh, founder of Dogfish Head. I got my dogfish head uh, Sam last C. year. Sam C uh, has a video out. Um, on YouTube where he talks about this 120. And he says that they intended for Caligione. you to share. Caligione. Uh, sure, we'll go with that. Sorry. Um, he intended for you to, sh to share the 12 ounce bottle, not to drink it all yourself. But if you're going to drink it all yourself, to drink it over the course of a long night. We don't have a long night here, so <laughs> we're just going to drink it. <laughs> There's the color. On my, uh, uh, through my phone lighting system that I have. It's so genius. I put your, <laughs> put your light behind it. <laughs> behind the other side. There we go. A little too bright there, but yeah. How about that? I mean, it's a nice color. It's, it's, you're not seeing through it. Nope. It's pretty, uh, pretty hazy. It's not like hazy, hazy, but it's, you can't no. see through it. It's bubbly. Got some bubbles going on. My head, though, is pretty much gone on that thing just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty much a straight pour. I ended up with maybe a half-inch, three-quarter-inch head on it, and it's down to a quarter-inch now. <laughs> definitely smelling hops. Definitely smelling the booziness, some citrus. Yeah, it's for, I can, uh, there is some fruitiness to it for sure. Hmm. I'm ready to drink this. Okay. <laughs> Can you have a drink now, please? Whoa. Oh, my God. Wow. Um, uh, just that, like every other person I saw review this today, that was not at all what I was expecting. No, me either. That alcohol <laughs> nails your ass 
<laughs> right at the front. Um, so we're just a few minutes into the show today, and I'd just like to warn you right now, I don't know where this is going to go. But, uh, <laughs> could be fun. Wow. Wow, man. So I, let me try this. Uh, let's try to describe this. <laughs> gosh um yeah alcohol <laughs> i mean <laughs> um what's solid funny is, uh, solid alcohol when you when you first when it first hits your mouth the alcohol you definitely taste the booze uh but it's not like a um a sting you know, like a like if you take like Jack or something, a shot of Jack or whiskey, right? It's not like that, right? But it is you, solid boozy flavor. But then, interestingly enough, after you swallow it, you definitely feel the warmth going all the way down your throat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, into your stomach, into your stomach. Yeah, yeah, and, you just feel the warmth all the way down. Um, but then on your palate, your there's the hops, there's the citrus. Um, And I mean, it definitely has legs because that, that citrus and hops stay on my tongue for a while. But that first hit is just like, whoa, that's not what I was thinking. I get, uh, it's a little Damn. bit or- orangey to me. A little bit of an orangey flavor after the alcohol passes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like the first thing after the alcohol passes, I taste the orange. Yeah. yeah. I don't know much about this. The hop that the the um, uh, the uh, high alpha American hops. I don't know much about that. My guess is that just because of the name, it's going to have high acidic levels. But um, let's see, man, that, it's just um, so I can understand why. <laughs> And a lot of the reviewers we saw today, you know, in our research, when we we'll, when we have a beer, we will go and look at what other people have read about the beer, written about the beer. Um, we'll look, of course, on all like the Rate Beer and Beer Advocate and uh, Untapped. Um, and then we will, from time to time, look at other beer reviewers and see what they have said about it, especially beers that are like this, that are this popular, um, that are kind of this sought after. And in everybody we watched today, Every one of them pretty much said this should not be called an IPA. This should be called a barley wine. And yeah. I, I understand that now. I do totally understand <laughs> I it. I get now. what they are saying. Uh, I understand completely. So, yeah, it's that orange flavor. It's floral. I've got um, a little bit of a floral taste in in schnief. Schnief. We, ne- we didn't do our rules of engagement. That's okay. We're okay. <laughs> if you want to hear the rules of engagement, just listen to the other 13 episodes. Yeah. Well, we're not live tonight either, so we can edit it. It's true. And do whatever we want. <laughs> um, orangey, florally. Um, it doesn't, I don't think there's any uh, actual toffee flavor put into it, but I kind of, I kind of, I think that to me anyway, that the alcohol content, with the hops that are used on the finish, I get a little bit of a toffee flavor. Really? Hmm. Uh, but that just, that may just be me. I mean, I'm, that's, I, I can't say I heard any other reviewer say that about it, but um, it's very barley wine-ish, although much higher alcohol content than any barley wine I've had. Yeah. So this one, 20 minute IPA, this is 2017 version. Um, Cause they Ooh. do release it twice a year. Um, yeah. April and November, April, and November. Ours are from, or mine's from November. Yep. Um, well, yeah, the, the bottle date on ours was December, but it would have been the November batch. My, my bottle date was November. Remember? Yours was oh, it was? Yeah. Mine was a month. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> So on, let's see, Untapped has this at a four three one, with nineteen thousand three hundred and two check-ins. Um, nineteen thousand three hundred seven actually. There's been five since you 
Wow, since I took that screenshot, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is this? Uh, rate beer has it at a 99 out of 100. And um, Beer Advocate has it a 4.11 out of 15 with 8,300 ratings uh, on rate beer. So uh, I um, I don't even I don't even know where to go from here because it just confused me. Well, what's interesting, uh, again, and we come back to the IBU scale, th- this beer is not bitter, like, at all to me. Nope. No. 120 IBUs, and it's, I mean, it's hoppy, and it's boozy, but it is not bitter by any means. No, this is more of a booziness than absolutely anything. Um, yeah. It's a weird mix of stuff. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I don't. Maybe, I maybe toffee is not the right word. Maybe I mean maybe that's not the right flavor character that I'm that I should be thinking of. But there's there's I don't know there's something weird on the finish of this one that I I just, maybe I just can't quite put my finger on it. But yeah. No. What do you what do you, what are you thinking right now for initial reading? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to rate it pretty high, I think, because I'm honestly comparing this more to a barley wine than an IPA. And I, you know, I love barley wines. They all pretty much rate really high for me. Um, so compared to that, my initial rating, I'm going to go f- four, two, five. Wow. I really like it. I think it's fantastic. I uh, don't like it that much. Um, but what I am going to do, and I know, well, actually what I've already done, I am going to age one for a year. Yes. Um, and I might grab another one to go longer just to see what changes in it. I bought two today as well to age yeah, so for me, um, well, I might I might age one. I'll probably drink one. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. It's different. It's not something that I could sit here and go. I'm going to drink very often. I don't like it that much. Um, I'm actually going to probably do this at a three right now. Wow. And we'll see how it changes as it warms. Now, one thing that um, Sam did say on his like website or his, I'm sorry, on the, the video is that uh, this is something that you want to put in the fridge, but then take it out at least a half hour before to let it warm up a little bit. So we actually both did that. Yes, we did. Um, so this isn't refrigerator temperature. Mine's still pretty, it's cool, not room temperature, but it's yep. warmed up more than normal, I guess for me. So, yeah. So his rec, uh, Sam's recommendation was to warm it up to a, a around a cellar temp. Of around 55 degrees. 55, yeah. Where you would drink a red wine at. So you're at a 425, I'm at a 325. We've never yeah. been that far apart. I know. This is, this is the first significant difference in, uh, in <laughs> ratings between you and I. Yeah, we'll see how this ends. Now, Dogfish Head's been around for 22 freaking years. That's, yeah. That's pretty crazy. Um, yeah. It was started by Nin- Sam. 1995, that's right. Twenty. Yep. It'll be, yeah. Twenty three. It'll be twenty three years in June this year. Yeah. So ninety five. And uh, Sam was just a home brewer, um, and he's you know decided, hey, I want to want to do this. The, the interesting thing when when looking at this is that their brewery opened in ninety five. Between two thousand three and two thousand six, they grew nearly four hundred percent. That's insane. Um, they're featured in. A few documentaries, which I'm assuming helped to their um, their growth popularity. Beer Wars, which is a good one I did see. Um, there was a subject, mm-hmm. uh, Discovery Channel series, uh, Brew Masters. And we just two, back in 2010. Yeah, yeah, I'd have to go back and try to, I'd like to kind of watch, trying to try to find that, sh- that Jesus. The, I would the like Discovery to Channel find, show? find that Discovery Channel show, Brew Masters. I had, I had never heard of it till we till we looked this up today. Uh, yeah, I hadn't heard of that one. Um, I did hear, I did know of Brew Wars. I've seen that one with him in it and he talked a lot in it. So it's really cool to see. Sam him. is, by the way, if, if he, if anybody listening 
uh, if you don't know who Sam Calagione, Calagione is, I think that's how you say it, Calagione. Sure, why not? Look up some dogfish head videos and watch this man talk. He's a He is entertaining to watch. Entertaining, he's I, a complete and utter beer nerd. Yeah, absolutely. Absolute beer nerd. Um, I, so, you know, he's he's... He's one of the guys in that sense. He really cool. Um, I mean, I watched I watched a live feed of him the other day on Facebook or Twitter or something, and it's just like I mean, just down to earth guy, loves beer and knows a lot about it. He knows a lot about it. Yeah, in the Beer Wars uh, documentary, they they had a, a part of it where they were following him around or whatever. And at that time, they were they were just expanding part of the brewery. So he was talking about that. And then they, sh- they showed a clip of him in his home in the morning, getting ready to leave. And his kids were there eating uh, breakfast and his wife was there, whatever. And he went over to the corner to check on his beer that was fermenting. So um, he still has home brewing. And actually Gina, I'm going to have her try this. She wanted to try this. Ha-ha. So awesome. Get over here. Get over here. Don't be camera shy. Okay. E you okay. <laughs> right, she doesn't want to be on the camera, but she's going to try it. It's got a really good smell to it. You know, you, nobody can hear you if you don't talk. It's, it's a microphone. It has a really good smell to it. <laughs> it does have a delicious smell. Here, we'll, we'll make him. Oh. We'll put him on the screen so there, now you can get close to the mic so people can actually hear you. <laughs> no, they can't see you. <laughs> I can hear you, Gina. You can't hear me, but yeah, you can't hear him. Who? I. It's high alcohol. You. What, what Hi, you, Gina. Hi, Chad. What do you guys say that the? Um, it's eighteen percent. Whoa. Yeah. I don't think I could drink a whole twelve ounce glass myself, and I know Adam well, said it's not really intended to be. Right. Right. Um. But actually, it's incredibly smooth for. Right. What it, it's a hundred. What you say? One hundred twenty-six IBUs. Right. One hundred twenty. 120. Yeah. One hundred twenty. It's. I would not have expected it to be. It's that not bitter. Sweet. Not bitter at all. Not at all. I mean, it's got a little bit of a bite to it, but it's really good. Although the bite, I think, is is the hoppiness Ooh. and the alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the booziness hits you right up front. It does. It really does. But I tell you what, that is, wow. It's a really surprisingly um, smooth uh, glass of beer. It's good. I like it. Yeah. I'll so help you finish surprised. that if you want later. <laughs> <laughs> I am so surprised that she likes IPAs now. That's just a new thing for her. You ruined me. So uh, you ruined me. I just enlightened you, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. You got the lady who doesn't like IPAs now loves IPAs. Doesn't mind this one at all. So. I should get Brittany in here. She who doesn't like beer at all. She's like beer at all. <laughs> 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 this is, I mean, this is pretty far from a beer flavor really you know there's not um dogs and dogs running down the (laughs) horses um you know what i mean like it's not it's a beer flavor but it's not as much of a beer flavor as normal (laughs) well i mean that that 18 percent abv it really kind of puts it in a league of its own yeah you know, as far as beers are concerned, I mean, you're, I don't know if they sell, they, I don't know if they probably don't put this on draft anywhere. I think it's only bottled. It's gotta be only bottled. I would think so. I don't know how, I know you can get this. You, how would you police that? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, you just have people drunk as hell in your bar if you're putting this on tab. Yeah. Yeah. This is a special occasion beer is really what it is. <laughs> I mean, I, I, to be completely honest with you, uh, I mean, I've had not even quite a quarter yet, and I definitely feel it. Yeah, my ears are warm, so I can always, <laughs> I can always tell when the alcohol is starting yeah, to get ready. My ears get warm first, and exactly. they're warm. It's like wow. Uh, it's, um, now, one thing that Sam and Dogfish Head are known for are really not being afraid to do anything with their beers. I mean, they just did. Uh, we talked about before they did a. Um, what do they call it? End of the world beer. What do they call it? Like an ap- apocalypse beer. What? Is, I can't. Oh, remember. How about? Uh, oh, do, 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 do. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but they also didn't they just do one with mace as well, something like that. Yes, they did just do one with mace. Yeah, I looked that up. So now I can't remember. Um, uh, 
In Your Mace. That just came out. Yeah, In Your Mace. Yeah, that one just came out. Um, I mean, it's a dark, roasty beer with a tan head. In Your Mace is a coffee milk stout brewed with cinnamon viram chips from the Zanzibar Island. Mace, spice, milk, sugar, coffee, chicory, and most importantly, chili oils. Wow. Uh, The active ingredients in Mace brand. Yes, pepper spray. That's insane. <laughs> it's it was a, it's being sold super limited, seven fifty seven fifty mil bottles. And there's only they only made two uh, two hundred bottles. They're selling for eighteen bucks. So you know we'll never get this. But if you go to their website, um, duckfishhead.com slash blog slash your dash mace, you will see pictures of them literally wearing like hazmat suits to handle this. <laughs> um, to handle like the warts. Uh, and the beers it's 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 crazy but that's just that's the stuff that dogfish heads known for they're known for just coming up with these crazy beers i mean they put they put weren't they one of the first ones to put like ghost peppers and stuff like that like they put all hot chilies and all these crazy things yeah yeah they're yeah they're fairly well known for for doing some crazy stuff i can't find it on their website but i just remember the name of that the survival beer is what it was called uh is that what it's called? It's the no. It's called the end of the wart as we know it. Yes. I don't. I don't. It's not on their website anywhere that I can find. Well, I and we couldn't get it. Uh, actually, we probably we could have gotten it if uh, if my friend Mike was around the day that they released that. He said he he if he was home he would have flown over to get it for us. <laughs> um, but yeah. he was uh, he was on a work trip, so so the end of the war one we did talk about that in one of our first episodes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they had this thing independently tested by a third party lab, and it contains more than eight times the amount of vitamin B complex than one of America's best selling light lagers. <laughs> it includes over ninety percent of the daily recommended servings of folic acid, um, and. Uh, it was on sale on January twenty seventh on a ultra limited release, of course. Again. Yeah, so, I think only at the brewery. Yeah, right? it was only, yeah, it was just there. Uh, Saturday at 11 a.m. on uh, January 27th, 700 yeah. bottles. So yep. just again, just they do crazy different things. Even their run-of-the-mill beers, though. Um, I'm trying to find one of these. They always have just, I don't know, weird stuff in them. Um, no, I can't find them, but. Well, sequench ale is a sour I just had the other day. That's made with um, sea salt. Uh, yeah, I mean they're always they always put kind of out of the norm uh, ingredients. You know, and it's, it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. I mean, there's yeah, there's the Midas Touch is one of their fa- one of their one of their famous ones, I guess. It's an herbed spiced beer brewed with honey, white muscat grapes, and saffron. Who uses saffron in beer? I know. Well, the uh, Okay, so Sequench Ale. Uh, it's a session sour mashup of crisp Kolsch, a salty Goza, a tart Berliner Weiss, and um, brewed in sequence with black lime, sour lime juice, and sea salt. And it's the they say it's the most thirst quenching beer dogfish has dogfish has <laughs> ever ever brewed. It was delicious. I love that one. I I I, I didn't rate it. I rate it a three seven five or three. Yeah, I think three seven five because I didn't go to a four on it, but it was really really good. And they have the American Beauty, which is um, made with brewed with granola, um, inspired by the Grateful Dead, the band the Grateful Dead. They have oh yeah, um, Apricot, yeah. Hop, which is an American IPA brewed with apricots. I mean, yeah, they're not doing American Beauty this year, but I see that was on. They it, did, was, yeah, it was a limited release, so I don't know if they're even doing that anymore. Yeah, probably not. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's just the whole the whole thing is they just do some crazy stuff. Sam's not really afraid to find some crazy ingredients. Uh, and 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 again in the in the documentary, he even talks about you know traveling to far off places um, just to find some c- kind of crazy ingredient to use. <clears throat> and I guess for part of part of the time, he actually traveled to a lot of different places around the world looking for weird ingredients to put into his beer. So that's, yeah. that's the way he is. It's the guy he is, but that makes Dogfish Head really unique, super and unique. Yeah, and I, you know, I've only had a, a handful of the of their beers, so I'm I would I'm gonna definitely look forward to trying more of them 
as uh, 2018 progresses. I actually would like to try all of their IPAs. They have seven of them. Um, I don't know if they're doing all, all seven this year, but the 60, 90, 120, and then they've got a, one called 61, which is a beer wine hybrid brewed with Syrah grape must. Uh, Era Hop is a spring seasonal brewed with apricots, Bur- uh, Burton Baton, and Imperial Oak aged. Uh, it's an Imperial Oak aged IPA. Ooh, wow. And then they have the cask or bottle conditioned 75 minute IPA, which is the combo between si- uh, 60 and 90. So they've got, a, they've got I mean, the 60 and 90 minute IPAs are, are kind of traditional. They're staples. Uh, yeah, that y- you can get them pretty much anywhere. They taste like an IPA you would expect an IPA to taste like. Uh, all of these other ones are quite intriguing to me, especially after having this one. Yeah, Namaste is one of the year rounds. It's a wit beer with uh, orange slices, fresh cut lemongrass, coriander. I'm trying to see what their year round is. The Indian Brown Ale is year round. The Burton Batten is a year round. 60 and 90, of course. Yes, they're year round. Uh, Palo Santo Maran, unfiltered brown ale. Hmm. Uh, so they, they, got, they got a large, large collection of beers. Do they do any stouts? I they thought did. I saw one on this list. Uh, but I don't know about year round. Oh, here we go. Uh, they have two of them they're going to release in 2018. Sierra Cusanera. Bless you. Uh, it's a stout, roasty imperial stout with jammy Syrah wine. Oh, my Syrah's my favorite Ooh, wine. That's nice. Uh, that sounds delicious. Can you and find that on their website? Yeah. Uh, there's a style. There's a there's a drop down where you can go to styles, and I, I selected stout. And there's another one. Let's uh, say yeah. Uh huh. Uh, wood aged, oh, wood aged, bitch, wood aged bitches brew, and bitches brew has been around for a little while. It's been around for a minute. For a minute. Uh, but this is a wood aged one. Bitches, oh, the bitches are back. He says only this time we aged it in our oak and and uh, palo or palo tanks, an off center twist of our classic bitches brew. Uh, has the same old, same bold, dark imperial stout, you know and love, but aged in a uh, oak barrel. Nice. Yeah, they, and you're right. They don't have a 2018 schedule out. Nope. I Just they have the 2018 releases, but not the schedule. Now, one thing also, they have a distillery. That they do, yes. Dogfish Head Distillery. So they make scratch made. Small batch um, spirit, so gin, vodka, and prohibition-inspired bottled cocktail. Huh. Well, Sam Uh, didn't do it all. He also has a restaurant and an inn. (laughs) I wonder if uh, if there's any distributorship on the on the distillery on the spirits, or if you have to go there to get them. I don't know. Yeah, because I don't know if I've ever really seen. Oh, it says right here. The distillery is very small. Dogfish head spirits are distributed only in Delaware and a handful of other states. Well, it doesn't say what the other states are, but there's probably all out east, I'm guessing. Yeah. By the way, Dick, uh, Dogfish Head is named after Dogfish Head, Maine, where wow. Sam's, Sam spent his summers growing up. There you go. Mmm. Uh, me likey this one. You have for you? Yeah. I'm almost. I will say it's it's toning down. You know what I mean? Like the like that last sip was definite orange. Like I got a lot of orange on that one, really. Um a lot of orange, a lot of citrus. The whole burn of the alcohol when you first take it is not gone, but it's not nearly as, as forefront as it was as it was. Dude, sure drinking it. you're going to shoot me. Why? My Wait. garage band crashed. <laughs> That's all right. I was looking at the audio from this. Okay. It was just a backup. I just, I just, <laughs> uh, I went back to check it just to see and it quit. Uh, 
at a minute 50 seconds. <laughs> That's right. It was just a, I mean, it's really just a backup in case something goes on here, but usually we don't have a problem with Zoom, and Zoom's better quality than Hangouts, so. Okay, well, I won't worry about it then, but whatever. <laughs> I've had some technical issues this evening, we'll say. Yeah. And it's all like, user error. He was not happy at the beginning of this show. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> now. This is this. I mean, this beer right now is definitely changing just in the past however many minutes um, since we cracked it and started drinking it. Yep, first, I would agree. The first half, um, obviously, the first ship was just first ship. The first sip was shock and all. <laughs> really, it was. It was. That's why I said that alcohol just hits you. It just yeah. kicks you in the ass right away. Well, because you're you're expecting IPA. You're expecting, you know, when you hear IPA, you know, kind of in your brain, you're ready for. Okay, I kind of have an idea what I'm going to hit get here. Yeah, and then you drink it, and you're like, "No, that's no." <laughs> yeah, your mind like goes mind blown. Your mind's like, "That's not what you said we were getting." So, um, but even now, knowing, even knowing ahead of time, right? This was described as a barley wine, so it, it still is. It's, it's still so surprising what yeah. it actually tastes like. I mean, there's still definitely the booziness. That's not going anywhere, but. A lot, a lot, a lot of citrus to me now. There's a lot of citrus in there right now. Like, I'm definitely orange. Like, it's just so present for me right now. Actually, I like this beer better as we're going as well. Are you saying you like it better? Oh, yeah. My, my score is going to go up. I'm at the halfway point so, because I definitely like it better. Because the first, that first, like, four or five sips, it's just like, I don't know if I want to keep drinking this, really. But here's the here, as you drink something, obviously you get you start to get a little bit used to it. And the alcohol, the alcohol content of this is much, uh, much less of a deal to me at this point. Yes. And it's not. I mean, one one of these beers halfway through it, we're not we're not buzzing or getting drunk or anything off of off of this half of beer. Although I can feel it, but I'm getting close. Uh, I think I think one of these would probably get you a good buzz. Either. Yeah, it definitely gets you a good buzz. But and it, and it's not. Uh, but I don't think that has anything to do with the. Uh, you know, I mean, as if if you go out in an evening and you're drinking for hours on end on an evening, alcohol becomes less and less of a factor in the way you taste beers. Right. I don't. I don't think that's what's happening here. I just. I feel like I'm just starting to get used to the taste of the of the high alcohol content and because i'm getting used to the high alcohol now i'm really starting to taste the real flavor of this beer yep and it's getting better right now you've moved past the shock and all you moved yeah. past the the alcohol and you're getting down to the other flavors yeah for sure i mean i taste no grain or maltiness in this you know what i mean like you normally taste with the beer you can taste some of the, the malt and grain there even on some beers, some of the yeastiness, but like there's none of that. Like I just, it's really a lot of citrus for me. Yeah. It's uh it's almost grapey or raisiny or something. There's something, it's kind of, uh, it tastes like it's getting a little sweeter. Mm -hmm. As my mind kind of pushes the alcohol content to the back burner. And now I'm starting to, I'm starting to really kind of pick out some of the, the other, other flavors that are in it and it is it's i think it's more raisiny than grapey i know they're kind of the same thing but t i mean they are obviously, obviously are the same thing but the flavors of the two are different i think it's i think it's raisiny to me hmm. yeah i can see that a little bit yeah i just get over i just get citrus like a lot but I definitely, but in a good way. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I mean, I'm, I started out at three, two, five. I'm, I'm jumping us up three, seven, five. I mean, it's, I think you started at three actually. No, you started at four, two, five. I started at three, two, five. Oh, I think you said three. My Either way, I'm going to three, seven, five. Okay. I'm going to four, I'm going to four, five. It's just getting better. It's, yeah. um, <laughs> Yeah. So if you ever have this dogfish head 120, don't go off your first few sips. Yeah. Give it time because yeah. 
Uh, there's some people out there who definitely on their first few sips would just be like, you know, F this beer, I'm done. Um, yeah, and I think I think even if uh, um, you're sharing this with someone, if you're sharing a single bottle with someone, there's plenty of time to drink this, even a half bottle, to where I think you'll get past the initial shock and awe and start to really enjoy the taste of it. And I definitely understand what he's saying about sharing this with somebody. You know, yeah. if we're sitting if we're sitting in the bar or whatever. We're, you know, we're or this is, we're pre gaming before going out for the night. Right? <laughs> I'm not going to kill one a whole one of these in a matter of you know an hour, an hour and a half. Um, yeah, I would definitely split it with somebody because it's definitely you know boozy. But this actually, now that I say that, this would really be a good pre game beer. <laughs> Because all you it, need is one. Yeah, no, it, you're yeah. ready. You're yeah, you, yeah, there's no need to, to grab a six pack of anything if you got one of these sitting around. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they, sell the, they do sell them in four packs, but you, I've always found them in the singles for these. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything. I went to uh, Ridgeview today, uh, bought two of them there. And in fact, I stopped at a uh, festival again this afternoon to grab a salad. Just And then I walked in the liquor store to see what they had. They had them in singles there as well. And then how much did you pay for one? Uh, Ridgeview 1049. Yeah, I think I was, I was gonna say that's about, I think it's what I paid also. It was like 10 or 11 bucks for the yeah, festival is dollar, I think a dollar cheaper, 950 or something like that. But I would, I honestly would rather give Ridgeview the the local the, the bucks anyway. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so what else about dogfish here? Um, let's see. So it's, they've down at the bottom. Well, I mean, I'm a, down at the bottom of the page on the 120 page. They have a column called the experience. Really? Yeah. So they, they describe the color, which we've already done. We discard, described it as, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. As they do copper, deep orange with a slight haze. The aromas, sweet citrus, piney, fl- piney. Ooh, piney. I don't know if I smelled piney, but. I don't think I got much piney out of this, this guy. Sweet citrus, piney, floral hops, yeah. Almost candy like. I can see the candy like now and taste. Yeah, after I'm halfway down it. Um, hoppy with that's some the hop aroma. Resin. Hoppy with some hop resin character. No, I don't. I don't. No, I, don't, I, don't I don't. I don't even. I don't. Uh, hoppiness did not come to mind when I drank this. No, at all. <laughs> no. I mean, it's it's a hoppy beer, but it's not like whoa, this is hoppy. Yeah, but that's not the first thing when you drink it. It's not the first thing I think of. You know, like when I when I drink a, uh, even when I drink a hop slam or a Pliny, you know, I yeah, I, I yeah, do hoppiness, and you that's one of the first things you're gonna say was well, hoppy. It's a little citrusy, piney, or whatever. Piney wasn't even on my lips when I, I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> hoppiness wasn't on my lips when when I drank this. Even now, I don't really. No, yeah. Initial, initially, it was all it was all alcohol. Now it's it's uh, the citrusy, citrus, yeah, uh, uh, sweeter flavors. Um, so while it's a super hopped beer, uh, I don't, I, I, I would not consider this a hoppy beer. Definitely not a bitter beer. Now, would you like many of the other reviewers that we saw? Um, IPA. No, this is way more like a barley wine than IPA. I, I, mean, I totally agree with that. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But then, okay, then where where does the style come from? Does the style come from the way in which it's brewed or the outcome of it at the end? Because the way in which it's brewed is brewed like an IPA. Right. So, that, I mean, that's it has to get the classification of an IPA. Right. Because of the way it's brewed. It tastes like a barley wine. Yeah. I can't. See, it doesn't... Like we talked about, I think one of the last ones we did, we kind of, I kind of mentioned how if you're putting that beer in front of the judge, then it has to hit all the marks of like an IPA, which this would not. And like a beer, no, you know what I'm saying? Like close, a beer judge, yeah. a beer judge yeah. would not be like, okay, IPA. No, yeah. you're not an IPA. Yeah. Even though the brew process is IPA. Right. This is not an IPA. And uh, so I can maybe, definitely, I definitely agree with everybody on that. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there's any. There's, there's no, uh, there's no, I, I don't think you can even argue it um, around any other style as far as taste goes. It's very, it's just very akin to, uh, to the, to the taste a flavor. A boozy barley wine. Of a really boozy barley, uh, barley wine, yeah. Yeah, now this, they also do say that this 
um, what is that cheese pairing? I, I don't even know what that is. Uh, it, I, I don't even know if I can pronounce that. <laughs> right. I have no idea what that E P O I S S E S is the cheese pairing for this. I have no idea what that is. A poisis. A Poises. food pairing, it would be smoked almonds, smoked meats, grilled lamb, or ginger snaps. Sounds Not that like- that matters. Um, I mean, I would just eat, I would, whatever. At this point, I would just drink it with whatever. <laughs> uh, oh. Now, they do also have a restaurant. It's a French cheese. Oh, there you go. Man, that food on that restaurant page looks good. Oh, yeah, on their... Uh, they have a food truck, yeah. too. Yeah, the Brewings and Eats page. Yeah, and they have an inn. Oh, they're in, uh, Re- Re- how do you say that? Where they're located? Rehob- Rehoboth? Rehoboth? I, yeah. Reboth Beach? Rehoboth Beach, Delaware? Anyway, they're in Delaware. And if <laughs> Delaware is kind of small, you should be able to find it. <laughs> in the end, I mean, the end just looks like a Motel 6. <laughs> Well, it looks like better than Motel Six. Sorry. Um, this looks cool. like, yeah, this looks like a really cool place to uh, to visit. Road trip. I think we say that we say that yeah. a lot. Yeah, we, <laughs> we got, we got a lot look. Of we groups. we got to Only Child. We got to Goose. We <laughs> we've been to four or so right now. So hey. yeah, yeah, we we'll hit another one this weekend. We we'll another one this weekend. Yes. Uh, looks like they do a lot of. Charity type work as well. If you look at their benevolence, benevolence page, they do a lot of stuff like that, giving back to the community and stuff. So, wow. Beer oh, and gosh. benevolence. Yeah, they got a good website. Um, I yeah. do. I like breweries that have good websites. Um, we we haven't come across one yet that doesn't though. That's true. Um, all the beers that we've reviewed, all all do have. Excellent, excellent websites. They've all done a very good job. Hmm. I am pleasantly surprised. Again, when I first drank it, I was like, nope, uh uh-uh, not happening, but I'm liking it. I'm actually almost done. I definitely get the candy flavor. You know, they're talking about the candy. Yeah, in there. But again, the orange is sticking around, which I, it's great. I love orange, so that's nice. I think it would be it'll be very interesting to crack that bottle a year from now. Um, because the, the bottle that I have was bottled at the same time as this one, so uh, November of seventeen. Yeah. So to crack this, you know, <clears throat> November of uh, eighteen or, or later, <coughs> see, see how those change. Uh, that's going to be interesting. So just for comparison, I went back and looked at uh, a barley wine page I had bookmarked. Um, so this would be more, this would be more like an American barley wine because they're supposed to be more hoppy. Um, and I mean, the color, the hoppiness, uh, the alcohol content to an extent, some barley wines reach 12 to 13%. What what is the range? Is there a certain range for barley wines? I yeah, uh, eight to twelve is the the usual range. There are some that are a little bit higher. Okay, but eight to twelve percent is the usual range. Um, the description uh, the description of the barley wine. I mean, is is hoppy again? Hoppy bitter, which this isn't quite. Is well, I mean, I don't really find. American barley wines all that bitter, but they do have some bitterness to them. Well, again, uh, if we're talking IBUs, the barley wine range is sixty to hundred. Yeah, but again, as we beat with a dead horse, it doesn't mean you're going to taste bitterness. Right. So the color, the sniff, um, it. I mean, uh, let's see, earthy hoppiness, wininess, fruit, toffee flavors, noticeably hot alcohol. You're right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. When you look when you look through like I'm on um craftbeer.com on their beer style section and under American barley wine, I mean this pretty much hits everything on this. Yeah. 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 The boxes are checked, but because of the brewing process, 
that I mean, that's my guess. I mean, again, it's got it's got to be. I mean, that, why, I mean, why would Sam, they can really call it what they want, can't they? I mean, yeah, but I mean, I mean, Sam knows his shit. I mean, I don't. Why would he? Why would he call an IPA if it's not to him yeah. an IPA? Yeah, and I, you know, I don't know if if the sixty ninety one twenty are all the same recipe, but the only difference is the boil time and then the added hops because they're they're doing hops continually during boil. So I don't know. I, I would really like to. Maybe that's an interesting show, dude. We do the sixty ninety one hundred or one twenty next to each other. Yeah, I mean, and, and uh, why not do a seventy five? We used to be drunk off our socks, but yeah. if we could find a seventy five. Yeah, 75. I don't think I've ever seen the 75. I haven't. Yeah. No, I mean, I I, I want to say I think I've heard of it, but I I don't know. I, this, I feel like I have, but I, I can't I can't say for sure. Yeah, this is um I mean I'm just gonna say I'm pleasantly surprised the more I drink. This is probably the one where I've never disliked a beer this much and then liked it so much by the end. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I've never been so disappointed in the first few sips of a beer that by the end of it going, holy crap, that was a good beer. Um, you know, so it's, that's, that's good, man. Yummy, yummy. I was just trying to take a picture for my, uh, for my untapped and that did not work at all. I washed it out big time. <laughs> Turn off your flash, man. Well, I, but I think without the flash, it's too, too dark. So, I don't know. If you're listening to our podcast, thank you so much. Uh, we also do shorter versions of the show. Uh, we call them quick reviews. Um, we typically will post those on our YouTube page. So, you can also find any information about us where you can find us, all the websites and everything at uh, beardedhops.com slash find us. Go to YouTube and you'll see all of our quick reviews there. Those are usually reviews that are uh, typically anywhere between six, nine minutes, depending on what we're doing. Um, we don't really talk about the breweries as much as we talk about them here. We don't talk, go too far in depth like we do here. Um, and it's only one of us, so we don't go back and forth. Um, but we do give you a quick review of what we think of the beer. And then by the end of it, we'll give you an untapped rating just on our initial impression, because during the quick reviews, we don't have time to actually drink the whole uh, shotgun, the whole freaking 12 ounce of beer. We've done but we always of, finish. We always finish the beer, oh, and the, and the actual rating will be on. on yes. <laughs> oh, we finish. The beer. <laughs> we do not leave a man down. No, unless uh, it's so, a drain pour, which is fairly rare. Yeah, that, actually, that hasn't that hasn't happened on a podcast yet, or on not a on a podcast. No. Yeah. Uh, only in personal time. So, yes. but yeah, check those out, um, and uh, you know, give us a subscribe over there. And um, on, uh, are you done? Have you finished it? You can do a yeah. Subscribe on YouTube and uh, on any of your your uh, podcast services, and give us a review. Let us know what you think. Give us some comments. We would love your feedback. Yes, we would. I am done. I've had my last I'm sip. There. I'm almost there. Wait, how what much about? time? How much time did it take us to drink this? It's we we did it in less than an hour, and it was like forty five minutes, I think. Probably about forty five minutes. Yeah. I don't think Sam Sam would not be happy with that. He probably would not approve. I'm not driving, Sam. Get off my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going anywhere, Sam. Oh, Sam, leave us alone. So what are your finishing thoughts on this beer as I as I finish mine? Tell yeah. the fine folks at home. What 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 are your last thoughts here on the Dogfish Head 120? Okay, uh, so Harley wine. <laughs> in summary, major alcohol to begin with. Uh which uh, honestly, right now to me, that's one of the best things about this beer. I, yeah, looking <laughs> back at it, right now, looking saying. back at the last hour, uh, even though that initial impression was like, "Damn, that's a lot of alcohol," it really turned into something nice. Um, you get used to it. Yeah, the fruity flavors come out, citrusy stuff, uh, candyish. The the smell gets better. Now it did warm up, obviously, as we drank it. Um, halfway through it, I was loving it. At the end of it, I'm still loving it. Yeah. I'm gonna stick with my 4.5, the the raised 4.5. Yeah, I mean everything you said. Uh, once you get over the the initial 
shock and awe of the whole thing of yeah. um just that boozy slap in the face um <laughs> i mean really that's really it's what it is you know because if this is a if this is a glass of jack daniels i would expect that right so it's right. not so much a slap in the face because i know that i'm going to take a sip and these first few sips are going to hurt because it's straight jack yeah um, but when you're talking about it's an ipa you just even again even though we heard this even though we've watched like three or four reviewers on YouTube today tell us the same thing, that wasn't what I was expecting. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, again, I started low on this because I didn't think I'd want another one, but right now I'm at the end of this and I want another one. I know, I do too. <laughs> and I mean, it would be, be if I had another one, it would be bad news. I would be, I'd be drunk. Well, being that, I mean, these are these are. I mean, I don't want to say they're readily available. I mean, I could go to the store tomorrow and buy probably 10 more. Yeah. So there is I, a period of actually, time the year, though, where the, I don't see them as much. Yeah. The probably the closer you get to the closer you get to April, like in March, they're going to be less and less available. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then the same thing in uh, September, October, they're going to be less and less available until the next round comes out. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I, I would be, I have two more. One, I'm definitely going to age. I've got it sitting in the age group. Um, the other one is still in the refrigerator. I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, maybe I'll come back in another two or three weeks to the to the other one, um, and try it again, and just to just to see if the initial kick in the nuts alcohol is there, or if because now I know what it tastes like, if I'm going to, if I'll recognize that and be like. Oh, I get it right, right off the bat. Because now you know what to expect. Maybe you won't yeah. hit so hard in the nuts. Yeah. yeah well, really let, sure. let, me, let me just be honest with you for a second. I've been hitting the nuts so many times by my dog's <laughs> tail. By your dogs? Yeah. By their tail because <laughs> their I have great Danes and they're so they're just at the right height that their tail will whip you in the sack. <laughs> and let me just tell you from experience, it doesn't matter how many times they hit me in the sack, it's never less of a shock. Yeah. So I'm saying, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that's it might be. be the same experience all over again. <laughs> but I will say, you know, yeah, I'm going to, I have one because uh, I bought two and I got this one. So I have one that's in my wine fridge right now that I'm, I intend to just let sit and ride. Uh, but yeah, next time I go to uh, Beer Bazaar or Antioch Liquors, I'm going to pick one, pick one or two up. And yeah, because I, I, I'm going to want to do it again. And Start out a three, two, five on this. I'm going to a four. Um, it, nice. really, it really did surprise me at the end. It really did. I didn't think, I didn't think I would like it this much by the time I got to the bottom of this glass. So, uh, well, that's really cool uh, because we, I mean, we started so far apart the first time that's ever happened in the beginning of the episode, and now we're both. I mean, we're not right there. I mean, we typically end up rating beers very, very close within within a quarter or so yep. of each other. So we're we're half a point away, but uh, excuse me, I'm go ahead. You keep talking. I'm no, just just the question. fact that you you started out low and you came up to to really really enjoy the beer. And I know, I mean, the way we rate beers, uh, when you when you reach that four threshold, it's uh, to me that's something special. You know, I yeah, rate I exactly. rate I rate I rate a really really good beer like the Sequench is a good example, three point seven five, excellent beer, it, but it's not like something special that i would put in the four or up range so the fact that you came up to a four i'm not saying that's your scale but that's to me that's like oh wow geez i mean this is this no is a really a, good enjoyable beer yeah a four a four means yeah i'll definitely have it again you know what i mean the four means i'll buy it yeah you know? so um yeah it, I mean, it really, it did surprise me uh, from that first sip down to the, to the last. And the, the last sip, again, there's through the middle and the end, just a lot, a lot, a lot of citrus and orange for me, which that's great because I love that. I love orange. I love citrus. Yeah. Um, but you, you could definitely, at the beginning of that, uh, you got a drink near the middle and the end, that candied flavor. It was a sweetness yeah. that came out that wasn't really there at the beginning. Um, and the booziness sting went away. Yep, for the yeah. most part. I mean, it was still. I mean, there. you could still it tell it's there, but it's. It wasn't like 
mother of God. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. First sip, mother of God. Last sip, damn, that was good. Yeah. Can I have another, please? <laughs> bartender's like, no, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Strong, boozy, sweet. I still don't get the hoppiness, though. I just, um, you know, the first, when you, when you crack the bottle open, hops for me. Yeah. Pour it, hops. But then even as I got down through it, and every time I go to take a drink and take a sniff of it, that hop aroma kind of wasn't there. I would say at halfway point or a little before the halfway point, that hop aroma kind of left for me. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I would totally agree. Totally agree. And that's so interesting. On, uh, I mean, we've, as beers warm up, we, I, that's, that's actually one of the biggest things I've learned since we started doing this show is that if you let the beer warm up, you're going to get some massive flavor changes. But I will say that this is the first time that's happened with an IPA for me because yeah. usually with an IPA as it warms up, it, no, gets, it gets worse. Dirty, it gets worse. It doesn't, it's not good. Yeah. Um, you, you know, usually like even when Dan or Jake would ask us, I would say, yeah, with an IPA, get it cold and just drink it. Yeah. But, and with a, with a stout um, or a porter, yeah, let that, let that bitch warm up. Um, yep. This IPA, let that bitch warm up because the cha- the, the flavor changes from beginning to end were amazing. Yeah. Really? Well, obviously. I mean, you, you changed almost a full point. <laughs> yeah. From yeah, beginning to end in 45 minutes. So yeah, maybe if I was a little tipsy, maybe I would have gone higher. Who knows? <laughs> you, you get me to do a lot when I'm tipsy. Just- <laughs> Oh, Adam, don't we know? Don't we all know? Don't we? Everybody know? knows. There's plenty. There's plenty yeah. of clips out there on YouTube. <laughs> oh. By the way, I think your, uh, your, is it your YouTube account that says you're still a vegan? I don't know. Which one? There's something out there that still says you're a vegan. I have so many accounts. <laughs> it's not even funny. <laughs> Look, the one thing you got to know about me, I'm a web domain whore. I have I own so many domains. It's not even funny. I have so many email accounts, so many social media accounts. I don't know. I'm probably in one spot. I'm probably a vegan. The next spot, I'm probably like a Muslim. And then the next spot, I'm like. It, it's actually, it's funny you bring this up because my phone was making all kinds of noises tonight when I was making dinner. And Brittany's like, what's going on? I'm like, it's probably all Adam because they all make different sounds. Because there's, I'm like, it's Marco. It's texting. It's it's Messenger. It's Allo. <laughs> It's probably, I'm like, it's probably all Adam. Adam's just finding every single app that I own and hitting me up on it. Yeah, that's what he does. He's an annoying little bitch of a star. Uh, no, it's not annoying at all. I love it. I absolutely love it. It turns out it wasn't all you, but it, I was just like, oh, it's probably all Adam. Well, man, this was one of the funner beers, I think, I would say. Um, yeah, I would agree. This In is a 12-ounce tw- really- bottle, the... The emotional roller coaster that I went through <laughs> for this beer is crazy. Um, and it could be the alcohol talking at this point because I just consumed 18% ABV in a 12 ounce bottle. Um, but that was really good. I think if you've never had Dogfish Head 120, give it a shot. Uh, definitely share it with somebody if you're yeah, for sure. doing anything. Um, <laughs> but I think that's one thing we should aim to do grab a, a, a 60, 90, and 120 and, and, kind of try them all together you know what i mean because i think that'd be an interesting comparison between well and the, you know, yeah and the, and the 75 is i think it needs to be at, in there as well because if we can find it if we can find it i would like to maybe i'll call sam tomorrow <laughs> sam the bottle broke sam I, <laughs> broke. I think maybe i'll do that i'll see if i can get a hold of sam tomorrow look if you call and you ask for sam you've got to some find a way to record that shit <laughs> well you can record we can you can record phone calls in uh, on the iphone can't you no oh i thought you could maybe with an app but yeah just turn the video camera on it'd just be funny to watch you asking and kind of hearing them go who the hell do you think who's this are? guy yeah who's this guy hey sam can i get a 75 uh um, tell him what we want to do and yeah we'll see we can see i'll we'll see if i can get him Never know. Never know. Look, if you've had the 120, let us know. Um, you know, you can 
really multitude of ways to get a hold of us twitter facebook instagram email all that stuff uh, beardhops.com slash find us you'll all the information there i would love to see how other people thought of this what other people thought of of this 120 um it's so funny because i've seen this on the shelf so many times i know and i'm like I always and, pass by it yeah because in, in my head i'm going 120 minute ip that shit's got to be happy and bitter as hell yeah i know that's exactly what i thought too when Mike um, brought this to me, I'm like, yeah, I mean, okay, thanks for bringing it. Right. It, it was funny because <laughs> when you told me that, I was like, all right, cool. You know, but it wasn't <laughs> like, oh, really? That'd be great. Yeah. But I will also say, and what we've learned about IBUs, <laughs> and this, and I know, Jake, if you're listening, it's going to trigger you all over again. Trigger. Um, trigger. But if all the things we've learned about IBU, again, you know, this, a 120. No, I mean, I, I will never, I will never look at IBUs the same again. I will, I mean, there's, there have been many beers I've turned away, and I've said, no, nah, I don't want that. IBUs are too high. Um, but no, I'm going to keep trying them because, you know, you just don't know. This is way more about the alcohol than the IBUs. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, well, yeah, eighteen percent. How can you say it's not? Um, yeah. But I mean, well, both the, both numbers are really, really high for a beer, but it's, I mean, as, as far as like, if you looked at a beer, any other, say pick any other beer that's 18% and 120 IBUs. Is there another 18? What's the, what else is 18%? There are other beers that are 18% or even higher. There's uh there's a stout out there. I can't remember what it's called. It's 24, 26%, something like that. You need to get that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this is the highest ABV beer I've had. The other one was the Abyss from the Chutes, um, which was a, that's an, that's a Imperial, stout uh bourbon barrel aged i believe um but if you find another ipa that's that has really really high alcohol content that has a really high ibu rating you're you may not get this balance that that's right this, i mean you, you might get something that's super bitter and not that drinkable but Absolutely. this one nicely balanced more about the alcohol than the ibu yeah, I gotta put this on my my shelf. Yeah, this one's uh, uh, this one's definitely going on my shelf as well. That's cool. I just can't show mine yet. It's it's over it's over there behind behind the, the black curtain. curtain. Behind the curtain. <laughs> wow. Well, that was a good one, man. Um, it was. I can't wait to like I said, I can't wait to try the year old one um, and see what that's going to be like. So. Yeah, and I'm going to try and go maybe two or three weeks and then have another one because yeah. I'm just – I'm so curious to know when I drink the next one. I'm not – I can't wait for another year. But I mean, I've had one that I, I'm going to age, but I can't – I don't want to wait another year to see if this experience is repeatable or because now I know what it's going to be like if that first sip, the first half of the beer is going to be like, oh, my God, this is so much alcohol. Yep. You know? Yep. Very, very, very interesting. Very good. Yeah. Well done, Sam. Yeah, well done, Sam. You did a good job there, kid. Um, and it definitely makes me want to try more dogfish head beers. Uh, kind of like, yeah, you. I haven't had really that many. Apparently, I checked in a 90-minute. I don't remember that. Um, so I need to do that again. Um, but I, don't, I, don't, I, I guess I don't know what it is about dogfish heads. When I see it on the shelf, I don't gravitate toward it, you know? I don't know yeah. if it's the, if it's like the, I kind of think of it as, oh, you guys are just kind of being cute with these funky ass recipes you're using or something. But this changed my mind. I mean, yeah, me too. I, I will, I will grab one and you know, try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go next time I'm, I'm at Ridgeview. I'm just gonna get all the ones that I haven't had. Yeah, I'm just gonna pick them all fun. up, put them in my fridge, and try them all because this. Yeah. We should do a dogfish head show. How about that? That'd be fun too. Well, yeah, sure. We got, well, we got, then we got two dogfish head shows coming up. We'll do all the IPA. Well, not all the IPAs, but all the minute IPAs. And then we'll just do everything else. Look, if any of their breweries <laughs> are out there and you want to send us a whole bunch of your beers to, to, to review, we'd love it. And one of, one of the funnest thing I think we've done on the show is when we've done the comparisons. Um, yep, I do. I agree. Shows. Yep. You know, that, that was, that was just so much fun when we did, you know, the comparisons and of course they were the whale beers, but um, I think, I think we should maybe try to do more comparisons between either same brewery or different brewery or different years, because that's just a lot of fun to be able to 
pick and pick out like, well, wait, well, how is this different? How is it not different? It's yeah. So, yeah. All right, Chad, I think we have. We did it. another one. We did, we did another one. We did. Uh, thanks everybody for hanging out with us and listening to us ramble about this beer. That was very tasty. Um, again, if you've had it, uh, let us know. Love to love to hear your thoughts on it, what you thought of it, loved it or hated it. Um, uh, this, of course, v- audio that you're listening to, if you're listening to it on the podcast, you can, of course, you can see the video on our YouTube channel. And if you're watching YouTube, you can, of course, see this, listen to this in your car, at work, whatever you want uh, via the iTunes YouTube or the iTunes podcast app. <laughs> Easy for you to say. For you. Um, we're also on all the other places, tune in, Stitcher, and all that crap. So um beardops.com slash find us. That's us. You got it, man. All right. Thanks everybody. And uh we'll see you. Thank next you. Time. Hey Adam. Huh? Let's do this again. Please. All right. Because I'm my feet are warm. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> see you guys. That was good. That was, like, that was, oh my god, that was delicious. I mean, honestly, the, at the, when I first took like the first like uh, like I said, first probably five sips, I'm like, I'm not gonna finish this shit. I don't know if I like this. Yeah, I I could tell. I was I was watching your face there, and it was like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he really That's likes this first. one. But then once you got to the halfway point, it really like the orange and the candy and the that was some good shit. Very very good. Uh, Surprise. Not at all what I expected. No, and not a, nothing like what I was thinking. Mm. That was some numminess and thumbiness. Mm-hmm. I can go to sleep now. <laughs> good tonight with that. That was good. All right, well, I'm gonna do my check in.